Well, good morning. For those of you who may not know us, let us introduce each other. We have been described as the golden couple for this event. But I think we're more like platinum, judging by the color of our hair. This is my wife, Priscilla. And this is my husband, Henry. Two rather different characters with a 13 years age difference between us, but we do share many interests and values. We've been together for nearly 30 years. 29 years and 46 days, and we still manage to make each other laugh. Some days we laugh more than others, but we still manage to make it work. Many of you will associate us with the GBC TV series, The Flavors of the 1001 Nights, way back in 2001. Gosh, Henry, do you realize some of the people in the audience may not even have been born then? Well, the good thing, Priscilla, is that the recipe for making it work applies to all ages. We believe we have the ingredients or strategies for making it work for us. Positive attitude, really believing that you can do it, whatever it is, and giving unconditionally. Respect for each other, accepting differences. En este mundo traidor nada es verdad ni es mentira. Todo es según el color del cristal con que se mira. Love. Love. And giving unconditionally. Making it work can also apply to any situation, not just relationships. Let us share with you an example. Let us take you back to June 2010. Priscilla had always wanted to write a novel, but with no particular deadline in mind, the project kept being delayed due to other projects, activities and events like a cookery series for GBC, making pageant dresses for Miss Gibraltar contestants who invariably won and then wanted, needed another dress to go to the Miss World pageant. The Bijou fashion show and the Way Ahead hat show, both in aid of St. Martin's Special School. Priscilla being involved in the Gibraltar Business Network, now Women in Business, and of course, indulging our passion for Morocco by going over any chance we got. So, to make my book project a reality, I would have to make it work. In June 2008, we rented a lovely little house in the Casbah, in Tangier, so that I could spend eight hours a day working on my novel, while Henry did all the shopping and all the cooking. It worked while we were there, but then we got busy with other things again, so the unfinished novel was left pending. In 2010, our good friends Halid and Siham from Casablanca invited us to celebrate the Feast of the Lamb with them in their farmhouse in Bershid. We saw this as a great opportunity to repeat our Casper experience. And so on our way to Casablanca, we spent a few days in Tangier so that I could continue writing my novel away from emails, phone calls, and generally our busy lifestyles. So we embarked on our second experience of me writing and Henry shopping and cooking. <laughs> Henry had taken a book to read, The Power by Rhonda Byrne. The Power is the second book by Rhonda Byrne, the first being The Secret, dealing with the law of attraction. It tells you how you can attract things into your life, good, bad, or indifferent, by sustaining a thought long enough and really believing not just that it may happen, but that it will happen. Having tested these on a number of occasions, and because I had time in my hands, I decided to challenge it with something so big that if it did happen, I would have no doubt that it had been due to using the method explained in the book. So I challenged the universe to find us our ideal home in Morocco. Although most people in Jib assumed that we already owned property in Morocco, whenever we had thought about it or spoken about it, we, I really, <laughs> had always come up with reasons why we didn't need or or want to buy a property in Morocco and would be better off renting instead. The next morning, 
during the course of breakfast, one of the owners of the boutique hotel Darnur mentioned to me in conversation that he had a friend who had a house for sale in the Kasbah. Would I be interested in purchasing it? I had had breakfast three days running with him and never once had he mentioned the house. Only after 12 hours having made the declaration, I was already being offered a house to purchase. The law of attraction really works, I thought. So very casually, without wanting to show my excitement, I said, it would be interesting to have a look at it. We went to see it that afternoon and we both fell in love with it. The access was perfect. Within the Casbah, but with car parking facilities within meters of the front door. The house had been tastefully refurbished, maintaining the ethnic charm, but now including practical amenities such as electric sockets everywhere, a toilet on each floor, a terrace with a 360 degrees view from which we could see Gibraltar. We were so excited. Henry was prepared to ask for early retirement in order to buy the house with a gratuity. We went on to Casablanca to spend the Feast of the Lamb with our friends, reluctant to mention anything about the house because he can buy everything better and cheaper than you. While in Casablanca, though, I allowed myself to think of all the reasons why I wouldn't want to buy the house and doubting that it could actually happen. On returning to Gibraltar, we contacted the owner who lived in France, who said we were one day too late. The house had sold the day before. Well, we had not made it work, for whatever reason. Some might say it was not meant to be. Some might say we had not believed enough. Nada es verdad ni es mentira. Todo es según el color del cristal con que se mira. Three years go by, and in September 2013, we were back in Tangier, having a tea, as one does in the Café Tingis, when the owner of Darnur, whom we hadn't seen in three years, goes by, sees us, and mentions that the house we had wanted to buy was back on the market, where we're still interested. We immediately said yes, and the same day arranged to revisit the house. We were still in love with the house. We had photos taken in the front of the house, and we even introduced ourselves as neighbors to the owners of a new restaurant that had just opened next door, the Morocco Club. At that stage, though, I was not prepared to retire from work. So, on our return to Gibraltar, we went to the bank to ask to remortgage our property at the anchorage, which would enable us to buy the Kasbah house in Tangier. The short story is that one cannot have a mortgage beyond the age of 70, which meant that the repayments would have been exorbitant to repay the loan in a very short period of time. We decided that at this stage in our lives, we would not embark on this purchase. So we forgot about it and got on with our lives. April 2015. Henry was due to retire in June. Two months before retirement, as he was deleting old emails, he came across the last email that he had exchanged with the French owner of the Casper house, and he felt the urge to contact her to find out if the house was still available. She answered within five minutes that it was. Were we still interested? Although Priscilla loved the house, she said she would not want to buy it without having stayed in it. The owner I knew was not keen to rent it out, but Priscilla would not agree to buy it unless she had lived in it, heard the noises, smelled the smells. I want to feel it, she said. We persuaded, I persuaded the owner to rent it to us, but when would we do this with our busy schedule? I had to attend a NAPWA conference from the 5th to the 10th of May in the UK that I had organized. I had to work on the 11th, 12th, and my last working day was the 13th of May. On the 14th of May, I had to present the 50th anniversary Rotary Gala show at St. Michael's Cave. 
followed by the gala dinner at the Sunborn on the 15th. I also needed to submit my retirement forms stating whether I would opt for no gratuity and a large monthly pension or a, small, a reduced pension and a substantial gratuity which would enable us to buy the Casbah house. So we packed on the 16th and went to Tangier on the 17th, which gave us all of three days to make a decision. No pressure. I knew that Henry wanted to buy it, but he wasn't pushing it, I have to say. On the third day after dinner, over a drink on the terrace, he faced me and very seriously he said, Darling, I want you to know that my happiness does not depend on buying this house. Please don't feel obliged to say yes just to please me. Say yes just to please you, darling. I love the house. I want us to buy the house. I now had to start haggling to bring the price right down, which I did. A la hora de regatear, he's ruthless. <laughs> so, we returned to Gibraltar and got on with organizing my retirement party. And Henry doesn't do things in small measures, as you probably know. And his party reflected this. Well, I felt it was important to me, after having worked for 38 years, to say thank you to as many people that had worked with me. So, once the party was over, what a party it was, not having told a soul about the purchase of the house, off we went to Tangier to complete the purchasing of the property. And on the 24th of June, 2015, everything happened smoothly. And we signed on the dotted line. Everything on the same day. Quite an achievement in Morocco. So, making it work. The purchase of a house, our relationship. Positivity. The law of attraction. El cristal con que se mira. Respecting differences. Respect for each other. But one thing is true. I, I love you. Love you. <laughs>